we're not trusting you automatically. That right. is some, we are trusting her judgment, but we're yes. not trusting you. And I think yes. that discernment is what matters. Hi everyone, I'm Julie, she's Kelly, and we're here to find love. We're in Bachelor Season 27, Episode 8 and 9, Hometowns and Women's Tell All. For those of you who don't know us, we're two dating coaches who analyze the relationship psychology and dating themes in reality TV shows, especially The Bachelor. If you're into this kind of stuff, hit the subscribe button to follow along and join the conversation. So let's start off with talking about our hometown dates. We started off with Gabby, who took Zach to her hometown or her home state of Vermont. They went and did a cute little maple syrup themed date, which I thought was really cute, except for the fact that they like tapped a tree and then they never actually like got any syrup out of it. And then later they were tasting all these syrups and Zach preferred the high fructose corn syrup over the actual real maple syrup. I think that might be the best. Oh my God, you just shot me. This is fake. Like the bottom of the barrel, <laughs> worst <laughs> syrup you can buy. It doesn't even maple syrup. It's not even fake maple. It's, I was like, oh my God, Zach, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? It was very symbolic of Zach, though, right? For him to like really <laughs> prefer this like very manufactured, very like sugary version of something versus the real thing, oh, which shit. everyone knows what we're talking oh, about. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no shade, but it was when I saw Zach chose uh, choosing that. I just thought, wow, of course he would. Of course I he would know. just prefer that oh, versus the real thing. <laughs> the perfect uh, metaphor, right? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we get it, Zach. Anyone who pretends that they don't like a little hit of that, like log cabin style maple syrup. We see through you. <laughs> as far as the actual relationship, I think Gabby and Zach are cute. What did you think about their actual date? I think their vibe, I always feel like Zach and Gabby just seem like they get along so well. Their sense of humor is really aligned. I think that she's very goofy in a way that Zach is very goofy. In the way that they see life, it is through it's as if life is an adventure and I love that they both have that in common with each other and that they both prioritize that so much. Mm -hmm. It just feels like him and Gabby are just people that really feel comfortable with each other. They have like a really lovely best friend vibe. I don't know if he's like super, super attracted to her, but mm -hmm. I think it's very even. He just likes her so much and she hits all of the right, you know, she like takes all of the right boxes for him, but he doesn't maybe feel as attracted to her as he does to Ariel and like Katie for example mm, but I can tell mm -hmm. that he thinks that she's like a really solid girl yeah I think so too I think that his other connections are going to eventually outweigh his connection to Gabby but I mean Gabby is so interesting and delightful her personality is just a little bit different from the typical girls on this show and I bet that's part of the thing for him is that she's just so different in a lot of ways just like in this like subtle humorous type of way she's probably so fun to be around we know zach loves that loves a fun girl and so like <laughs> she's probably just so pleasant to be around so i kind of get it i just yeah i don't know if i really see this being the long-term thing but i know some other commenters of ours disagree so let us know what you all think about gabby and zach's connection and their dynamic do you see it going forward or do you think this one is going to kind of taper out Okay, the only thing that did stick out to me, though, I will say, is that Gabby, I mean, everyone does this, but Gabby kept saying that catchphrase of this hometown state, which is like every season, this is always the thing, which is family is the most important thing to me. Family is the most important thing to me. Other people were saying that a lot, too. Zach says it a lot. Everyone on this freaking franchise is always saying that catchphrase, and I always find it to be a little bit almost inauthentic or... It's almost like people aren't really thinking about what that means. It's like, is family actually the most important thing to you? I, I think that is true and beautiful for some people. I think some people, I, I do actually say like, oh yeah, they like, their family really is like the main kind of orbit of their lives. But I don't think that's actually true for a lot of people. I think a lot of people like love their family, but I don't know that it's fully accurate to say that family is like the most important thing to them. And so every time I hear people say this, I'm always like, is that really how you feel? Like, are you just kind of saying words that you hear on this show a lot? This is like an unpopular opinion. <laughs> but like, 
I also kind of think that in some ways, it's like we all, I mean, hopefully love our family a lot, but this idea that family is the most important thing to you makes me wonder, I'm like, do you have other things going on in your life that you care about? Like, do you have like, you know, passions and hobbies and interests that like really light you up? Because I think that if you did, I don't know that you would necessarily say this. I think it's beautiful when you get to have a close family, but then kind of seeing them as like the most important thing in your life, to me, in some ways, it almost feels limiting and in some ways almost a little sad. I don't want to call it a arrested development, but you know when you're a child and literally your parents are the most important thing to you because they're all you've ever known, but then eventually you grow up and then you have your own life, your own interests, your own friends and family community and you know, partners and you have your own thing going on and eventually it's like your parents are still important to you, your family is still important to you, but are they the most important mm -hmm. thing? A lot of people really do care about their families and I think that's great. I don't know, but sometimes when people say this, I just, I almost cringe a little. Well, because it is kind of a dated term that, I mean, listen, I know that being family oriented, especially in traditional bachelor narratives, it's a very sought after quality because it almost unconsciously signifies that you're a person that has certain values in your life and there's certain things that you anchor your life around and in a way that makes you a little bit more predictable knowing that you're really family oriented mm. but right there's like a feeling that if you say that you're are really into your family that means certain things about you as a person maybe that you yeah. are community oriented that you have these traditions that you might be ready for like a family in the future because you're so centering that so I do get that to some extent but I do really wish that the show was kind of being a lot more dynamic and updated for what is true now because I would say for a lot of people a lot of people in different communities family does mean a lot but your friends can also be a version of family and that could also be as true to you maybe even truer having your potential partner meet them versus your family I would say in my situation of me and my partner he's only met virtually because my family we, we live in different states so he's only virtually met I think a few of my siblings and he's talked to my mom on FaceTime but really he's met only my friends like the people that are really really close to people I've known since I was a kid growing up and I would say their approval is almost more meaningful to me than like my yeah. family's because yeah. I feel like my family kind of always unconditionally well not my mom but my siblings are always like okay like whoever I'm dating is kind of cool they don't have a lot of questions they trust my judgment they are not overprotective they are not too intense of anything they just kind of accept it as a fact my friends are not like that. My friends are the people. <laughs> Kelly can attest to it. My friends are people that, you know, they are really checking my partner in a way that my family does not. <laughs> so like for him to go yeah. through the paces of meeting my friends, it actually does mean a lot more to me. So it, it's just funny how yeah. The Bachelor always kind of positions the family as being the arbitrator when I would right. say with me and I think a lot of other people, we have different ways of assessing that. Yeah, you're so right. Especially because, you know, people act a certain way around people's families that maybe isn't the full picture of who they are. People want to be there on their best behavior almost in front of, you know, a partner's parents <laughs> and you know, you might not get the full picture versus when you're around your partner's friends, that's still like, you know, your peers in, in, in a certain way. And so they're more likely to get a full picture of your partner than your family is. The only other thing that I wanted to say about like this, like family is the most important thing to me is I just also think like, Ariel kind of said this. She was like, yeah, my family's important to me, but so is my city. It's just as important for you to get to know my city. And I loved that she said that. I think that there are so many parts of our lives that are important. And when people like emphasize that family is the most important, it's almost like people like, are devaluing the other parts of their lives. Or like, my career is really important. They never freaking talk about their careers on this show. And I think that's pretty weird because, you know, the work that I do is so important to me and who I am as a person. And the fact that they don't get to talk about that on this show is kind of weird and I mean frankly most of these girls work in marketing and social media influencing they're like literally just lambasted if they talk about that work so like they literally can't talk about their work on this show which is just it's all very strange and the 
ultra focused on only family as being the most important thing it almost in a weird way feels like it like puts this emphasis on especially i don't know maybe this is like as a woman too it's like this idea that family has to be the most important thing to me having kids having a husband having that kind of family unit and there's something about it that like the connection of it all it makes me feel like i'm getting kind of pushed into a box it doesn't make you a less worthy partner if your life doesn't revolve around family and just because you didn't have a close-knit family growing up or currently doesn't mean that you know it's going to impact the way you're going to show up in a relationship with your partner and so kind of watching all these different people continue to say that say that language i don't know it just makes me think that's all i'll say about that i'm curious what other people think about that phrase i think it's just a, a little bit about like that ultra focus can sometimes something about it just feels a little bit off but i'm so curious what other people think about this <laughs> all right so let's get into ariel's date who was next she was the second hometown and she brought zach to new york which oh this really made my heart like just That's have my so home. much I love warmth. New York. I know. I was so nostalgic watching this date and like jealous. That's where me and Kelly met, by the way. Yes. Like, yeah. We That's used to our, both live in New York for a few years. I know. <laughs> it's like if I was going to take anyone to my quote unquote hometown, like even though I don't live in New York anymore, I still kind of feel like that's where I would need New to York take someone like. to like get to know me, right? So yeah. it was so cute to see Ariel take Zach around New York and all the kind of the classic Washington Square Park, the speakeasies, the, you know, dollar slice style pizza. Oh, I was like, oh my gosh. And I also felt like the, the date that Ariel took Zach on is a date that I would take any person from out of town on i'm like let's go to times square and let's get some pizza let's check out like the most famous yelp restaurants i mean it was very cute i ariel is way too cool for zach she's so cool and she's so trendy and she has such an amazing vibe to her i can tell that zach knows that he's like clearly punching up to be with her <laughs> right like he is aware that okay ariel is not a person that would typically like they wouldn't really be in the same world and it's not like zach doesn't have a similar vibe i just think aesthetically maybe like a little bit different with the activities or the circles they surround themselves in yeah so it just yeah. felt like he was being exposed to a lot of newness when he was with ariel and mm -hmm. i think they handled it well they seem like they have a very nice connection it's very clear he is so attracted to her and he's so wowed by her and yeah. i can tell that she you know she feels that and she feels really confident being a lot more open and vulnerable so it's really nice to see their connection mm -hmm. i would say i don't see it as being particularly deep it doesn't feel mm. like they're as advanced as maybe gabby and uh, katie are because it, it just seems like they're still like a little bit more playful and light and yeah maybe not as vulnerable with each other in my yeah. opinion yeah and i think you're right that there was a lot of almost like a culture not clash but like a uh, two different cultures kind of coming together represented both by ariel's like cool urban stomping grounds and also it was really cool hearing ariel talk about how proud she is about her judaism about her family's experience as immigrants my family is their experience as immigrants my parents fled the soviet union and it was very difficult for them they couldn't be who they were yeah. they were persecuted for being jewish and they came to the united states and kind of created a life for my brother and i here and for themselves so being first generation, I spend every day being extremely proud of what my family created and who they kind of made me out to be. Fleeing from the Soviet Union, being persecuted for being Jewish, and then settling in America. And Ariel talking about her experience being first generation. It was just awesome to hear that story being told on this television show that is so often about just like the classic, you know, family unit in America in the South or something, right? Like it's like so often about that type of narrative. So it's great to hear Ariel talk about a different family story. And I really appreciated that. And at the same time, I think for Zach, I bet it was overwhelming because it seemed so out of his usual orbit and the type of people that he usually interacts with. So you could tell how nervous he was and like how aware he was of like, oh, I'm really entering into a family unit or about to interact with a family unit that I really don't have any experience with. I don't have any experience with, I don't know if it's like 
Jewish folks or with immigrants, but you can just tell that he was like, I have no idea what to say about this. That sounds like it was really hard. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. tell that he just didn't even really know how to interact with it. And I know it hits really close for us. I mean, you know, we're both first generation as well. And it is funny. <laughs> it's funny to, to watch that kind of like fumble and like how clear it is that he doesn't have experience with folks like this. Yeah, Zach was very over his head. And I felt like that continued on when he met her family members, because I think that Zach had nerves meeting all of their families. But I think because maybe he didn't have any kind of like cultural background into like maybe what Ariel had gone through, or maybe who he stated in the past hasn't dealt with similar struggles you could tell that Zach was a little bit uncertain about himself and that definitely carried through when he met her family and he was kind of trying to figure out common footing with the conversations it just felt a little bit awkward fumbly which I totally get because when I've introduced my white partners to like my family I would say that it's kind of similar like maybe they kind of know what they're saying but then they're just a little bit what am I supposed to do (laughs) exactly a little bit on guard so I felt like that was realistic I mean for me personally I just kept thinking I wish that the bachelor would showcase different love stories in different backgrounds like Ariel's that is such a different and such an interesting story and something that I can personally relate to just in terms of like the first generation struggles and then even the resistance that her family and her brother naturally brings into the conversation of skepticism yeah. because that's not as common to have your sister finding love on a tv show you know i can imagine my family just kind of being like oh my gosh what weird american nonsense is this <laughs> like if i brought this freaking camera crew to like watch to like watch them talk to my new like white boyfriend like it, you know it is a little bit of like what the heck is this come, come on ariel like what, <laughs> what are we doing here like you know so i do kind of feel like that their toughness all kind of checked out to me i think i've had very similar experiences bringing boyfriends back to meet my family and them being met with a healthy dose of skepticism and it wasn't even on a national platform. It was just truly the fact that it was like, how do they, are they going to understand our family, our traditions, the way that we do things, which is diametrically different than the way that he might do things. I mean, I just really loved it because when I'm watching The Bachelor, it's not like I'm only wanting to see like racially diverse leads, even though that is a really big consideration for me. It's important that I'm also seeing people of different backgrounds. And I felt like Ariel really introduced this really nuanced take that I haven't seen in previous seasons before. It made it really relatable. And I mean, I like that. I like when I'm watching TV and I see someone that kind of looks like they could mirror me or represent me, or they might understand a little bit of my background. I know that with Zach's season, I think there was a Vietnamese contestant. And because I'm Vietnamese, there's like this kind of like thing a kinship of like oh my gosh i'm rooting for her purely because like she's from my community and i just want to see her succeed so i felt like the bachelor this is an opportunity where they really could tap into all of these other audience and viewers and really bring them into this like love story yeah absolutely i completely agree it's like in addition to wanting like leads and contestants with different skin tones we also love seeing like the actual stories that they had their life experiences being diverse right i love i loved hearing ariel talk about her immigrant experience i loved hearing her talk about having this family story that's so different from the family stories that we often see told on this show and that's also diversity right you know ariel's love story and the story of you know who's coming into her life and how they mesh with her family will be different from the story of maybe someone whose family has been in America forever and it's kind of like a typical, you know, American gal who's had a farm for generations. Like that's a great story, but it's a different story, right? And it's like, I am so excited to hear more stories like Ariel's. I think the other thing with Ariel's family that I loved is that they were so tough on Zach. I'm sure you're a respectable guy. I'm sure you're a nice guy. Whatever. When I walked in, I was pretty nervous. You still should be nervous. Why Ariel should pick me? Um, hmm. Great answer. In in some ways, I do think they were being a little intentionally instigating or provocative. They were basically setting Zach up to fail in certain ways. But 
also at the same time, I actually really appreciate a little healthy skepticism. I do think they brought that into the conversation and it became a little bit more nuanced and real. It was nice to see Zach kind of being cornered with harder conversations and listen, you're not the only one choosing these girls. You're not the person that's here and they're here just like dying for your approval. They also have a choice in it. So I felt Mm. like that was when the whole interaction evened out for me and it really felt a lot more like, yeah, the girls at this point, they're also choosing Zach actively. Yeah, absolutely. There was so much to love about the way that Ariel's family approached the situation. I think that when you are trying to kind of meet and vet a loved one's partner, there's like a couple different approaches that you can take. You want to, of course, be like warm and welcoming. Like you don't want to intentionally make them uncomfortable for no reason. Cause you know, if you're, you know, if it's like Julie's partner, it's like, yeah, like I want to like be able to get down with like Julie and her partner. Cause if he's going to be in her life and he's going to be in my life and I want us all to get along, of course it's important to me. And also on the other side of the coin is I think it's also good to have a little bit of a a, a close eye, a little bit of a protectiveness in some ways. Like I know that not just Julie's, but let me use a different example. That's not Julie. (laughs) But like with my friends, like all of my friends' partners, I always, it's like a balance of like, I want to be warm and welcoming and make them feel comfortable. But I also want them to know like, hey, I'm here, you know, I'm watching. I want to make sure that they know like, hey, like, this ain't the girl to mess with because if you mess with her, she's not, she's not alone. Okay. She's got yeah. people at, at her back, ready to go and like ready to rally on her behalf. And so it's a like trust really me. My partner felt that when he met you, <laughs> he felt that. <laughs> I think, you know, I, I think it's good. But I feel like that's the right energy to really bring into it because it's like, we have to make sure that the people in our lives are taken care of. Right. Right. And and I felt like the brother, I actually didn't feel like he was too much. I thought, yeah, this is just about appropriate for someone that you really care about. Of course, you're really going to want to come out, not like swinging per se, but just like, hey, we're not trusting you automatically. That is some, we are trusting her judgment, but we're not trusting you. And I think that discernment is what matters. Exactly. Ooh, I love that. You don't want to speak on your friend's behalf and like, right. you know, make it seem like you know everything that's good for them. Because of course, it's not true. Like you don't know everything about like what your friend wants and needs, et cetera, et cetera. Like, you know, you don't know everything. And so it's like important to not like overstep and like question their judgment. But I mean, it's just good to like show that you're you're there and like you're going to help your friend also like if there is a bit of like a rose colored glasses thing going on like you'll be there to help like ask the right questions if needed and if the partner ends up taking a toxic swerve you want them to know you want your friend to know that you're gonna be there to to say something right and it's like you want that person to know like i'm watching you and you're not gonna get away with pushing this person around because I'm going to step in if needed and pull them out of their delusions and make sure they know to get out when it's time to get out. Right. So it's like, it's like a little bit of that right, healthy balance of that warmth and welcomingness and, you know, letting them know like, Hey, this ain't the girl to mess with. I, I love everything that you just said, Kelly. I fully back that perspective because I really do believe that despite Yes, you can really trust your friends. You can really trust your family members and make the best decisions for them romantically. But at the end of the day, a lot of that love is rooted in and for better or worse. So whatever happens in this interaction, I have your back completely. And this person that you're with, I care about them as well. But I really care about you and like your health and your happiness above all else. I think when we're in relationships with people, we want the best we want to succeed we want it to last forever but you know not all relationships last forever especially if you're monogamous unless you like really really commit to it so until that point I think it is healthy for your family and your friends to just have a little bit of skepticism and a little bit of I just want to make sure that this is a good connection especially because of the fairy tale of the bachelor show You know, there is a little bit of like, are you in a bubble? Are you really seeing them fully? Well, if they really like you, then they wouldn't mind if I'm asking them all of these questions because they'll be able to take it. I don't mind if my friend's partners are like, you know, 
one percent scared of me I'm like good <laughs> like be one percent scared of me like I kind of want you to feel that way like I want to I want us to all be able to get down but I want you to be like one percent a little worried like oh I gotta make sure I get Kelly's approval like I want you to feel that way because that to get my approval all that really means is that you're treating my friend well like I'm not asking mm-hmm. you to jump over hoops here I'm just asking you to treat my friend well and to always be thinking about like what is going to be in this girl's best interest because you know that's what I'm thinking about that's all I'm thinking about I'm not I'm not exactly. asking you to like do like things that are completely Crazy out of hand here. Right. right it's like you want my approval like don't be a dick <laughs> to my friend that's all <laughs> that's all you have to do so you know if that means you're gonna be a little scared of me and it's gonna keep you on your best behavior good <laughs> you know? exactly be on your best behavior around my friend that's what I want <laughs> Exactly. And to that point, that's such an amazing uh, point that you raised, Kelly, because that's how a lot of like relationships that, and we're not speaking about Zach particularly, but like when you're in a toxic relationship or when you're in an unhealthy relationship, you, your friends might not have full visibility into that. Right. So it's really important that, you know, you kind of bring people close to you so that your friends can say something, they can check you, they can give yeah. you that reality of, I'm noticing something that, you know, you're different. He acts like this or she acts like this. Like, what's going on? Let's talk about it. Let's start the dialogue and let's have the conversation. So having trusted people around you that can facilitate that is super, super essential and important. So like, yeah, maybe there is a little bit of overprotectiveness going on, but it's a good thing because we want to make sure that the people we know, you know, without crossing any lines that they are being taken care of and that we are watching out for them no matter what. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a good way of putting it. It it is when you really think about how toxic relationships tend to work and why people tend to stay in them as long as they do. Often it's because they've kind of been become isolated from their friends and they're so mired in dynamic that is exactly. with their toxic partner. They're so mired in that that they're almost like trying to make their friends like uh, what do we kind of talked about this before but it's like you kind of want the people around you to just think your relationship is going well and so you kind yep. of like perform that a little bit and it's like yeah that is why it's so great to have a relationship with your friends where it's okay for them to come in a little hot with some like a, like a close eye on your relationship so kind of okay for them to have a little bit of a uh, a more skeptical or critical lens into your relationship because you know you want that ultimately because you want to you want someone to like shake you out of it if you are getting kind of sucked up into something that ultimately isn't good for you and sometimes you can't exactly see that for yourself until someone like a third party kind of someone who loves you and who you trust is able to kind of say something so I do think Mm -hmm. that you know what listen Ariel's family was a little harsh but that's fine I mean Zach if you have all good uh intentions and you are going to treat Ariel well they're going to come around so it's not like they're being harsh for no reason right they'll come Mm -hmm. around as soon as they see that you are you know putting actions behind your words right so that's a mic drop moment totally yeah like if Zach really does have great intentions then he wouldn't mind this and he would do anything that in his power to reassure and make sure that the people that you know are being overprotective feel like their anxieties are being assuaged and they feel confident about his positioning that's also really important I think it's uh not like a red flag but it's something to know if the person reacts differently or they're like angry about it or they are really pissed off about the family members or their friends being really overprotective because it's like, why would you care that you, you know, that this person right. has so many people around them that are looking out for them and have right. been like, and are actively going to do something if the relationship goes sideways. You want yeah. people like that in someone's life. That's what I see as like a healthy family yeah, and a healthy right. friendship. And I think also the opposite side of the coin is even though Ariel's dad was so harsh on Zach, later when he sat down and talked to Ariel, what I really love that he said was, I'm not sure about Zach yet, but I trust your judgment. And I know you have proven yourself to be able to make the right choices and I will support those choices. So like I loved that kind of balance of having that skepticism for Zach while also trusting in his daughter and trusting and empowering her and making her feel like, hey, like I know that you will always make the right choice and I'm gonna support those choices. I'm gonna support your intuition and trust your intuition. And we're gonna have a balance of a balance of these two forces, right? It's like your intuition that I trust and me as the third party 
outside observer, we're going to have a little bit of both in the mix. And I think that's the right way to do it. Yeah, so I know that when I first meet my friends' partners, I tend to be a little bit more of a care bear. I'm like, everyone is accepted, everyone is welcomed, <laughs> but I am watching out for them. Like, <laughs> I'm like talking to my friend very actively about it. And like when my friends tell me about problems with their partners, I like remember in the back of my mind for like, okay, like how is he talking to them? That's my approach, you know Kelly's approach. What is a iron fist and like a white glove? <laughs> It's definitely Kelly. <laughs> what kind of friend are you guys? Are you a little bit more of a care bear? Are you a little bit more protective? We want to know. So let us know in the comments down below. So that takes us into Charity State. It was really cute. They went down to Georgia. They had a really nice cookout. Her family members are so lovely. Her brother so is so sweet. Really <laughs> cute. It was so beautiful just like seeing her clearly in her element, seeing Zach being welcomed so nicely. They went to like a really nice concert, had a really nice time together. In this interaction, because Charity, I mean, she had a really tough relationship experience. It was marked by infidelity. You can tell that she still struggles with trust in her yeah. family, rightfully so. They're protective of Charity and they're just cautious about her committing herself to someone when she, they've already seen her go through so much pain. And I felt like the way that they handled that was really beautiful because I felt like Zach definitely did get a little bit of an inquisition, some questions, and them just wanting to make sure that she felt good. But at the end of the day, they really empowered Charity to take that risk, even though they knew that like, okay, you're one of four girls left. There is a possibility that you might not be making it to the end but we really want to support you. We support where you're at. We support that you're you know, in love with someone and that you could really see a future with him. And even though it might hurt, we have your back 100%. And I thought yeah. that was really beautiful because that's so hard to do, to see someone that has been through so much pain take that risk again for someone and then you hear and then you see things that they have going on and there's things in their yeah. past that make you suspect them but you're still yeah. like I have to I have to let them do what's best for them and that kind of reminded me a little bit of Ariel's father despite all of the stuff you've been through in the past I trust you and I back your choice a thousand yeah. percent yeah maybe in retrospect you won't think it's the best choice but no matter what you know in the moment i always have your back i love that i think that's such a clear unconditional demonstration of we always have your back no matter what and any mistake that you make is not a mistake because it's going to mm. bring you closer to who you are as a person and i want you to go on that journey of you being who you yeah. are and like yeah. it might hurt it might be painful but it's necessary for your evolution as a person and I support that for you. So yeah. I I loved it. I thought that was such a nice, beautiful thing that we got to see in like both of those family situations. Yeah. What did you think about it? You're right. It was really beautiful with Charity's brother. Clearly he was so wanting to protect her, but also willing to let her move forward and take a risk and like kind of mm -hmm. supporting her decision to do that to take a risk on Zach so hard and that's the other thing as like a friend it's like of course you can only do so much at the end of the day if your friend wants to date a you know little dingus or if <laughs> your friend you know is going to take a risk that maybe you wouldn't want them to take you just because that's how you feel doesn't mean you get to control them right at the end of the day it's like you want your friend to know that you're going to be there for them, even if they choose something that maybe you wouldn't choose for them, right? And you want them to feel like you are going to be there for them and not create distance just because they are choosing something that's not something that you would choose, right? It's like so important to let them know, like, listen, whatever you do, I'm going to be here for you. If it goes well, I'm going to be glad I was wrong. And if it doesn't go well, I'm going to be there for you, right? That was so beautifully modeled by Charity's brother. Just that trust and that that willingness to kind of let go of the control because you can't control your friend's decisions. You need to let your loved ones, you know, make their own choices. And all you can really do is just be there for them, whatever happens in the end. And of course, we know that Charity later does get sent home by Zach, but that's okay because she got... She's going to win in the end. <laughs> but we'll I was going to say. I know. We'll get to that. We're going to talk all about charity later. But 
Yeah, I agree that this was a really beautiful moment between her and her brother. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it clearly worked out because her heartbreak does set up her love story that she gets to go on. And Exactly. You know, life is duality. Like, you can't have pleasure without pain. You can't have love without mm. heartbreak. Like, you can't have these two different things unless you experience the other side. Life can't always be, like, rainbow and roses we want it to be. But, you know, hurt is necessary almost in, like, your journey of understanding who you are as a person. Mm. And I'm positive that from Charity's experience, she's a- and, like, what she went through of Zach, it's really going to inform her for her season and when she starts yeah. to, like date all of these different men yeah you're so right that's so beautifully said it is life is duality love that <laughs> <laughs> me throwing in a little philosophical bent <laughs> <laughs> it's great no i think it's amazing sometimes people can get so down on themselves if they you know after a bad relationship they'll be like how did i let myself like get into that how did i let my how did i let that all happen how did i you know, how could I be so stupid or whatever, right? But it's like, at the end of the day, we're all always making the best choice that we can in the moment with the information that we have. We're always trying our absolute best. No one's trying to, you know, fuck up their own lives. And so it is, it's it's about recognizing and trusting our ourselves and having compassion for ourselves. And listen, if we keep going and then something changes, we realize, hey, this is actually really not working for me. We'll make a different choice and we'll eventually get to where we're supposed to be. But no individual choice, this is probably a strong statement, but I would say it's probably true, right? It's like no individual choice is necessarily the wrong one. It's just another step that will eventually get you to where you're trying to be. Even if that individual choice leads you to something hurtful, that's okay to your point it's like maybe you have to go through that hurtful thing to get to whatever's next I totally agree it's controversial in the way that there's an acknowledgement that yeah that pain is kind of an inevitable in relationships and some kind even when you're super super happy but it's Mm. normal and I think if you constantly fight against it it brings you more pain because Mm. you're not just like letting the relationship be what it is which is literally everything it's like you and how your partner is and how you're both interacting with each other and of course you're different of course you're not going to get along and that's okay that's why we have constructive conflict that's why we have communication that's why we have all of these techniques and tools that we've learned from healthy communication all of this helps you in these moments you know and what matters more is like the love that is existing and is actively being nurtured every single day (laughs) <laughs> okay, let us all know down below what you all thought about Charity and her brother's conversation and yeah, that feeling of, you know, letting someone you love take a risk or yourself take a risk, knowing that maybe it's not going to work out and knowing that, you know, there's a chance that you can get hurt. How do you see your past relationships? Are they something to regret or are they something to learn from? So now we move into his date with Katie. They're back in both of their residences which is austin and it was really cute seeing that date that you always get like a realistic date at some point of the season and this was definitely it yeah they went grocery shopping they did ikea furniture (laughs) i actually started to like katie a lot more for getting this man to come over and just like fix all of the things in her house that she needed to have fixed i totally relate to that I loved their vibe. I liked how they got along. It was really cute seeing them pick out cereal. It was really cute seeing how they like handled building so IKEA cute. furniture, which always kind of brings a little bit of, you know, frustration on both yeah, sides. Yeah, it's a whole I thing think. building furniture for sure. It's like a whole project. So it's I, a whole in fact, project. I, I was a little bit like, damn. I bet Zach didn't realize he's gonna be put to work on this day. I know. But I kind of loved it for Katie. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it for Katie too, and it made me like her so much more because we got to see like, wow, she is so close to her mom. She was barely able to really talk about her mom without crying, and yeah. it was so clear when they saw each other and her entire family, her brother, her other family members, that she is in. A very 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 close-knit family and they mm. all have each other's back because of all of these hurts they've been through it was really beautiful to kind of see katie really take her mother's word with so much gravity of mm. her being like look i feel like i'm basically holding myself back a little bit until you give me the approval because oh, yeah, I, she did say that 
right? And you could tell that she was a little bit like, you know, I stayed in a seven-year relationship because I was afraid to leave him because I've had so many men leave me. And now I don't want Zach to leave me, but how much of him do I give for him to leave? Like, Mm. there is this very internal struggle that Katie is going through, and I can tell that she really needed her mom to give her a most permission that she could trust herself and that she could Mm. trust the decision that she was making as well. And I think the mom did exactly what she needed to do. When her mom was talking to Katie, she was aware of what she was saying. She was aware of, like, all of the words that she was telling to Katie, and she was like, "I, I, I can see that you're looking at me to give you this approval so if you want it you have it and Katie just immediately rushed in and was like oh my god that's all I was looking for because I'm really falling for Zach and etc and I think that Katie I don't think she has anything to worry about if anything this has more solidified to me that she is the front runner and that she is the one like this is her season to lose the way that Zach looks at her the way that he smiles at her the way that he can't stop beaming when he's with her it is so clear that like yes he has an amazing time of gabby and she has an incredible Mm -hmm. personality yes ariel is like very alluring and cool and mysterious and like charismatic and he's super attracted to her and she's so dynamic but katie is kind of like all of those things Mm. she has a little bit of ariel's personality of being a little bit mysterious or reserved and then she also Mm. has like the goofiness that i think zach really likes Plus, he's so attracted to her in a way that I haven't seen since Kat. He was so attracted to her, and I can really see that with Katie. So I just Mm. feel more and more that she, it's him and her at the very end. Like, no one else comes close. I agree. I also thought that they definitely have the strongest connection based on these four dates that we saw. What I will say is that on this hometown date, I did start to see some of Katie's like kind of cracks in the armor a little bit if that makes sense Hmm. like she seems really close to her family and in some ways I was kind of getting the sense it almost felt like a like a like a trauma response in some ways because Hmm. of all of the people who've left her it almost felt like she like clings to her family and to her mother specifically like her coming to her mother like I will leave Zach if you don't like him or like I will question everything if you don't like him that I love the amount of trust that she has for her mom. And I love that her mom was like, I will give this approval to you because you asked for it, not because I think that my opinion should matter. I love that her mom had that boundary a little bit or was able to kind of acknowledge Katie's agency in that way. But I think Katie herself, just some of the things that she was saying in her In The Moment interviews, I did get a little bit of a sense that she has quite a lot of maybe inner healing to do related to her abandonment issues related to you know all of these people these men who have left her or treated her poorly she kept saying things like I just don't want to lose Zach I've lost like every man who's ever entered my life has left every man who's entered my life has disappointed to me and you know I just don't know what I'll do if another man leaves me I'm worried about how she and Zach, how things, what, how things will happen if, you know, some of the red flags that we've been talking about related to Zach just kind of being pretty dismissive of his women's needs. I'm a little bit worried, like, what happens if he starts doing that with Katie later down the line after they get engaged and pick each other and whatever. And she's so desperate not to lose him that maybe she'll just go along with it. Like, so I did get a little mm. bit of a, ugh, I don't know, like, Katie feels like she great point great point she's lacking a little bit of like trust in herself and there seems to be some more swirling in there so I did get a little bit worried for her I do still think that Zach likes her the most and that he'll probably pick her in the end I just I got a little bit worried on this date and some of the things that we saw made me sort of question her readiness or like the degree to which she has really processed a lot of the traumas that she has been through because yeah she seemed so shaky in certain moments there almost like repeating the same pattern of like oh my god I really don't want this guy to leave me I can't trust myself so I need to only ask my mom to do it It, there was like some of the stuff I was like ooh, I don't know how much progress there has been since your past relationships 
Mm -hmm. I love that you brought that up and I didn't think about that when I was watching the interaction because I just was like wow like I just uh, I love seeing this new dimensionality to Katie because she yeah. has felt so confident and reserved in a lot of her emotions and what she's expressing yeah, until right. she talks about her family and this is something I always say listen it's totally normal when you talk about past relationships or when you speak about someone that you really love you're teary but it also signifies to me like let's say you're talking about a past experience that was toxic or traumatic like a previous ex if you can't do that without tearing up there's still a little bit of work to be done or there's something mm. about that memory that is still raw and that mm. you might need to unpack because the mm. more that you have this potency that this like emotionality just always comes out of you uncontrollably uncontrollably when you think about this thing that means that there is something to be worked on and guess mm. what your current relationship is not going to paper that over if anything yeah. it's gonna trigger it a lot because Ooh. you're gonna be with someone who theoretically can communicate can help you feel safe can talk to you about these things and should be talking to you about these things and I could feel that with Katie a little bit that whenever she would talk about you know this, her stepfather her biological father her past partner she is not able to make eye contact of zach at all I, it was actually very noticeable when Ooh. she was talking about her mom uh before they even went to go to her house she was looking at the floor the entire time and zach was the one making very engaging eye contact mm. with her so it's so clear that it's still very vulnerable and as we know like zach isn't the best person at I think he's okay at communication once a conversation is brought to him, but I think in Katie's situation, I would like to see her with someone that instigates it, that like actively talks to her about it, that like mm. asks questions, pulls her out of it a little bit, yeah. or is like, hey, I'm noticing in this conversation, it's a little bit about me, but it's really about your ex, and yeah we have to talk about it and it's not in a yeah. bad way it's like let's unpack this a little bit because i want to make sure that you're feeling good yeah i don't ever think it's a big deal to talk about exes in relationships maybe because of the work that i do or we do as dating coaches i always feel like it's super useful mm -hmm. because it does tell you a lot about how someone was in the past and i want to mm -hmm. know like how did you show up how did you if you did something wrong how did you have accountability and I would love Zach to be similar in modeling that because it doesn't yeah. seem like Katie is super comfortable being the person that's like, I want to talk about this because it's going to impact a relationship. So that might be something that they both deal with. That's just a speculation. I don't know them, so it's not, I, I yeah. can't say for sure what their issues will be. But that was something, based off of your point, is making me think, okay they're gonna have to clear that communication hurdle yeah. and i hope they have the techniques and skills to do it i have faith i hope <laughs> yeah yeah i completely agree i think katie and zach are gonna need to figure out how to really look at these challenges that katie is dealing with regarding her ex and her past with her fathers i also think katie herself is going to need to be able to really start looking within and interrogating some of these voices or some of these narratives that she seems to have because the way that she is talking about Zach I don't want to lose him she, she, like when asked to describe him she's always like he's literally the perfect guy which is always to me a red flag like if you describe someone as perfect like literally perfect to me I'm like okay no one's literally perfect but it makes me think like okay if you can't really see this person holistically as someone who is not fully perfect as someone who has flaws and it makes me worried that she is kind of doing this thing where she is seeing him like we talked a little bit last week about how zach kind of has this like savior thing where he likes to like rescue women who had bad pasts and come in and be like the white knight who saves them from their terrible history of bad exes and it almost feels like katie is doing the same like is almost like yes Zach will be the guy who's going to rescue me and save me and I'm never going to be abandoned again and you know he's the one who's going to kind of fix everything because he's actually going to stay and I think it's a really dangerous thing to put someone into that role of like my feeling of healing and wholeness 
is based on whether or not this man stays in my life, right? Having a man who stays with you is not what's going to fix your abandonment issues. What fixes your abandonment issues is being able to recognize you are going to be okay whether or not somebody leaves you. It's being able to be self-sufficient and being able to really see that you are whole whether or not a partner chooses to stay in your life. And Katie clearly has not quite gotten to that place yet because she keeps talking about how much she will not be able to tolerate another another man leaving her life, which to me sounds like she's setting herself up to kind of repeat what happened in her toxic relationship where she stayed way too long even after things got bad because she just didn't want him to leave. I'm, I'm worried that she's gonna do something similar with Zach where she's, she thinks he's the answer to her problems. She thinks he's the answer to fix her long history of being abandoned and i just don't think that's true the answer is within the thing that will provide her healing is recognizing that she is enough exactly as she is and it doesn't actually matter whether or not people enter and leave her life that isn't going to determine her wholeness and whether or not she's going to be okay and i think she seems pretty far away from recognizing that and that's the thing that really it makes me nervous for her. It makes me nervous about this relationship. You're spot on with that. I mean, it's clear that Zach is a nice guy and he wants to do his best and he has really good intentions. I just wonder the depth of his communication skills and his willingness to address hard things head on versus just focusing so much on having a great time and being so positive and upbeat. You know, like I, I kind of would right. like to see a little bit more range to that, especially because I think Katie will need it. I think yeah. out of all of the girls, it's very clear that she really will be impacted very deeply on Zach. I feel that a little bit of Ariel, I feel that a little bit with Gabby, but it seems like Katie will go through a lot of her if anything happens between her and Zach. Yeah. So yeah, I'm hoping it right. works out for the positive because i i mean i just feel more and more confident i don't know how you feel about this that it's like damn she is the front runner and i, I think also so feel like the girl he's intimate with is katie um next yeah. week i don't think I'm it would be one of them i'm so curious right? to know what's gonna happen there i, I kind of can't tell personally because zach kept like smiling every time that they brought this up during and we'll get into the women till all in a second exactly. here but he was like kind of like holding back a laughter or something when when uh, Jesse was talking about this whole sex week thing. So actually, I kind of got. The, I was like, whoever he had sex with, he either he probably ended up with them, or maybe the exactly. whole drama was like not what they're making it out to be. There was something weird going on with all of that. But um, but I agree with you that it does seem like she's ultimately going to be the one. The question will just be, is that even really a good thing for these two? That's or is that really a good thing for Katie? Is she going to use her relationship with Zach as a band-aid for fixing her abandonment issues? Like, that's my big question mark with these two. I will be surprised mm -hmm. also if Zach doesn't pick her. But I would be I completely surprised. It just seems so obvious after last yeah. night and the trailers that were coming mm -hmm. out that, yeah, he chose Katie to be the one that he was intimate with. And that, that means that he does pick Katie. And it's... Yeah, so we'll see how that kind of pans out for the both of them. I kind of see Katie sticking by Zach no matter what. So she will be a ride or die, which yeah. it seems like Zach is kind of looking for. Mm -hmm. So we'll mm -hmm. see. Well, this episode ends with a rose ceremony. Charity is the one who gets sent home. That means we have our final three. It is Katie, Gabby, and Ariel which I think sounds about right. It was sad to see Charity go, but that's okay because Charity is our bachelorette. I want you to be our next Stop. bachelorette. Is this for real? No yeah. way. No way. Is this for real right now? Oh my God, yeah. I'm gonna cry. This is totally real. Are you kidding? Uh, oh my God, I was so happy about it. I was so Prayers happy answered. <laughs> She was so cute too when they told her. She seemed just like so like, honestly Surprised. shocked uh, i love how she said that thing about how she's so happy to be a role model and show girls who look like her that you can be the bachelorette and that this can happen for you i loved when she said that i like got emotional it was so wonderful so i'm so excited for charity season i think it's gonna be so good i'm a little scared that they're gonna like abuse and torture her like they always do to the bachelorettes but i know i'm glad she at least has the 
the limelight on her. <laughs> yeah, and I just hope that her season, the men that are on her show, actually like black women. You know, yes, give oh my us fucking that. God. Not, I might, I could date a black girl. I actually love dating black women, and that's something exactly. that I look for, or something exactly. that I'm super open to, or someone that I want to get married to. Yeah, I completely agree. Please cast people who love black women. I don't want to see like white dudes out there who you know have never batted yes. an eye at a woman of color. That is not what we want to see. We want to see actual men who love black women. Please. Mm -hmm. give it to us guys <laughs> that's what <sighs> we're looking for <laughs> let's talk about the women tell all me and julie don't typically cover the women tell all just because you know it's like a lot less about the relationships and a lot more about like the the dynamics between the women which isn't always a focus of here to find love in our conversations we we always like talking about the dating and so this episode is just not exactly fitting into it but we can just talk <laughs> very briefly and give some general reactions to some of the main things that happened in this episode for me i would say the greer thing her whole blackface oh, yes. education on stage very interesting to see it i i'm happy that the show displayed it but where was that for garrett from becca season where was that from eric from gabby season i, I mean know. the show has historically lit in so many contestants that have done so many egregious you know, things on social media that it just felt a little bit weird for Greer to be targeted in such a way. I'm happy for the conversation, but like, why now? My hope is that this is gonna be continued, that it won't just, maybe that Greer just happens to be the first person and now they'll continue doing it. I hope I so. Really hope that's or maybe just don't bring on contestants that have done them in the past uh, you're right. right i mean exactly <laughs> like ideally they just <laughs> actually vet their freaking contestants who you know to make sure that we don't have to have these conversations all the time but what i will say is that i really appreciated it kudos to her for trying to have this conversation and for being willing to come up here and do it i will say kudos to abc for actually allowing this conversation to air i liked that professor too i really love what the professor said about like you know, racism isn't going to go up away from niceness, which I love that because I do think that people think that if I'm nice to black people or nice to people of color, that means racism doesn't exist. And it's like, uh, it's not quite how it works. It's like being nice to one or some people of color in certain situations doesn't mean that you won't also at times be racist and like engage in racist actions and so I really loved that point that the professor made and I appreciated that we were able to have like at least a little moment to have some conversation about that and to not just kind of let all of this stuff slide what else I also thought Christina did a great job redeeming herself in this moment she was just kind of like honestly like I can take it I appreciate you guys just telling me where I messed up and where I hurt you and now I can take that and do better and I was like great that's always all we ask for. Like, that's all we want. Just, you know, be able to recognize when you've hurt people and then try to stop hurting people. Good. <laughs> I think the only one who kind of like, to me, didn't quite hit the mark was Anastasia. I think she was kind of trying, but it just, I think the lack of genuineness was just kind of coming through. And that's why all the girls were kind of like a little bit more skeptical of her. But did you have any thoughts about like any of these apologies and how they went? Mm -hmm. No, I, I mean, I always feel like whenever they have these apologies, it's a little bit like, please, can I go on the beach? Can I go to paradise? You know, it just feels yeah. like auditioning. So, yeah. you know, when people are genuine or when people are disingenuous, I feel like as long as they've learned whatever and they don't repeat these actions, that's all we could really look for. But that's really mm -hmm. something that comes with time. So I'm yeah, just kind of, true. I think the girls all did a decent job at kind of like collecting themselves and you know having these conversations they needed to have with Zach or with the camera or with America itself right yeah I think that's I think that's a really good point that it's hard to really know how genuine or how much these exactly. apologies are gonna hold true and like how much the actions in the future are going to align with these apologies it's hard to know without some time so you're right and let's just kind of see how things progress and let's how, see how how the actions play out exactly what i also really liked was seeing the bloopers between the girls i was 
where was this during the entire show they focus so much on the love or the drama that we don't get to see the girls and i felt like if we had seen a little bit more of the personalities and the relationships with each other it would be a much different show and it would be yeah. just more fun and lighthearted, and we'd really get invested in the girls and not so much right. the lead because let's be honest like zach did not carry his season as much as his girls did. The girls yeah, were right. top notch this season. That's so true. Like Allie's whole thing about like not knowing how to kiss. I would have loved to see that in this season because then I think all of us would have been a little bit more invested in Allie. I mean, I already yes. liked her at her one on one date that she had with Zach, but it's like we just didn't know enough about her to root for her that strongly. But if I had seen those cute scenes of her like getting nervous about kissing Zach, uh, that would have been so great to have in the season. I was personally kind of hoping Anastasia and Allie were gonna make out all the like my like shit. I know, like, right? My like fan shipping brain just like was like going going wild seeing <laughs> that scene. I was like, oh, the camera just please. kept cutting in between them. I was like, what's happening right now? I was like, please, <laughs> just just I wanted to like take them like just dolls. do it. <laughs> like <laughs> just smash their faces and I know. <laughs> So let us know what you guys think about the woman tell all. What were your favorite parts? And if you've made it to this part of the episode, we love all of you guys so much for sticking with us through this very long-winded conversation. So let us know down below. You can tell us with a secret phrase, we are here for charity. We can't wait to see how many comments come up like that because we've been talking for a while. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, if you comment the secret phrase, we'll know you made it all the way to this point of the video. (laughs) Okay, next week is Fantasy Suites and I am so excited to see what the heck actually happens there. Like, is it actually as dramatic as they've made it seem? Zach kept laughing when they were talking about it. I'm kind of wondering if it's like a fake out in some way. I don't know. I'm very curious to see how this all goes, but we will definitely be here talking about it next week. And we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.